projectile motion. When we say projectile motion, it is a motion of a body thrown in a curved path with a constant acceleration. It is also a kind of motion wherein it is influenced only by gravity, like free fall. That means we are to neglect the air resistance. Let's introduce first the different terms that will be used in projectile motion. First one is projectile. It is the body or object being thrown upon which the only force acting is gravity. Examples are soccer ball being kicked, a basketball that was thrown, and a bullet fired from a rifle. The second one is trajectory. It is a curved path that a projectile follows. The trajectory of a projectile is a parabola. Lastly is the range. It is the horizontal distance traveled by the projectile between the launching point and the landing point. There are two cases of projectile motion. First one is projectile launched horizontally. The second one is projectile launched at an angle. Both cases of projectile are composed of two components. These are horizontal component and vertical component. When we say horizontal component, it is in uniform motion, which means the horizontal velocity does not change. Simply, it moves at a constant speed. Whereas for vertical component, it is in free fall. It means that it also moves vertically at constant acceleration. Here on Earth, acceleration is equal to the acceleration due to gravity. Remember everyone that the horizontal component and vertical component are independent from each other. Thus, we are to evaluate the motion in each component separately. Take note everyone that throughout the motion of the projectile, change occurs only in the vertical component of velocity due to the influence of gravity. The result of combined motions in the horizontal and vertical component is the parabolic trajectory. Therefore, there are two things that are happening at the same time. First, the object continues to move horizontally. Second, the object falls, resulting to a parabolic trajectory. For this week, we will focus on projectile launch horizontally. It is a motion where the object is thrown with an initial uniform horizontal velocity and it follows a curved path as influenced by gravity. I want you to observe the picture. Again, in projectile motion, there are two things that are happening at the same time. First, the object continues to move horizontally. Look at the path C. At the same time, the object also falls. Look at the path A. If we are to combine the horizontal component and the vertical component, it will result to a parabolic trajectory. Therefore, the actual path that the projectile will follow is the path B. So, in projectile launch horizontally, it is actually a combination of uniform horizontal velocity and body drop. Let's now analyze the velocity of a projectile launched horizontally. I want you to observe the video. The red arrows indicate the velocity of the projectile. 
and the length of the arrow indicates how fast the object is moving in that direction. I want you to observe the video again and this time observe the horizontal velocity and the vertical velocity. Again, if we are talking about projectile motion, we are to evaluate the motion in each component separately. So for the velocity, we are to find the horizontal component and the vertical component. What did you observe with the horizontal component of the velocity based from the video? So it is actually not changing, correct? Therefore, for the horizontal component of velocity, it is actually constant. So in this example, the speed of the projectile is 40 meters per second. So that means the final horizontal velocity is just equal with the initial horizontal velocity since it is constant. Now let's go to the vertical component. What did you observe? It is changing, correct? So for the vertical component, we are to use this formula. Final vertical velocity equals initial vertical velocity plus acceleration due to gravity multiplied by the time. And remember everyone, for the projectile launch horizontally, the initial vertical component is actually zero because it is free fall, specifically body drop. Let's now go to acceleration. I want you to observe the video. The blue arrow indicates the acceleration of the projectile and the length of the arrow, it indicates how fast the object is moving in that direction. So observe the video again and observe the acceleration. Let's now analyze the acceleration in the horizontal component and vertical component. Take note again for the horizontal component, it has a subscript X and for the vertical component with the subscript Y. What did you observe with the acceleration in the horizontal component? As you can see, there is none. Therefore, for the acceleration in the horizontal component, it is equal to zero. Again, for projectile motion, it is influenced only by gravity. That is why for the horizontal component of the acceleration, it is zero. Now let's go to the vertical component. What did you observe? Is it changing? So for the vertical component, the acceleration is actually constant. Therefore, for the vertical component of acceleration, it simply is the equivalent of the acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Again, for the vertical component of acceleration, it is constant, which is equal to the acceleration due to gravity. Let's now go to the displacement. Observe the X displacement and the Y displacement. Now let's go to the horizontal component of displacement. We can solve it using X equals VX times time. Or, as mentioned previously, the initial horizontal velocity and the final horizontal velocity is constant. Therefore, we can also use this formula. X equals initial horizontal velocity times time. For the vertical component of displacement, we can use this formula. Y equals initial vertical velocity times time plus one half gt squared. Again, for the initial vertical velocity, it is equal to zero since it is body drop. Another way to solve for the vertical displacement is to use this formula. 2gy equals vy squared or final vertical velocity squared minus initial vertical velocity squared or VOY squared. And once again, initial vertical velocity is equal to zero for projectile launched horizontally since it is body drop. If we are talking about time, 
As mentioned earlier, there are two things that are happening at the same time. The object continues to move horizontally and the object falls. For the time, both the horizontal component and the vertical component is actually the same. Lastly, at any instance, the magnitude of the velocity of a projectile is, so if we are going to get the velocity with a combination of horizontal component and vertical component, we just use this formula. So this is the summary for finding the horizontal component and the vertical component of acceleration, velocity, displacement, and time. To check your understanding, let's have a sample problem number one. A marble rolled on top of a table at a constant velocity and off the table's edge onto the floor. It took the marble 0.5 seconds to hit the floor from the moment it left the table's edge. The marble landed a meter from the point directly below the edge of the table. Find the height of the table and the velocity with which the marble is rolling on the table. Let's answer first the height of the table. So what are the given here? These are the range or the horizontal displacement, which is 1 meter, and the time, which is 0.5 seconds. We are asked to solve for the height of the table, which is the vertical displacement, y. So, what is the formula that we're going to use? So, it is y equals initial vertical velocity times time plus one-half gt squared. Remember, for the initial vertical velocity, it is equal to zero. So for the solution, just substitute the given to the formula. That will be y equals 0 meters per second times the time, which is 0 0.5 seconds, plus 1 half gt squared. Simplify, that will be y equals 0 plus negative 1.23 meters. Therefore, our answer is negative 1.23 meters or y equals 1.23 meters since the negative means the motion is going down. Let's now go to the second question which is to find the velocity with which the marble is rolling on the table or we are to solve for the initial horizontal velocity. Given will still be the same, x equals 1 meter and time equals 0 0.5 seconds. Formula to solve is x equals initial horizontal velocity times time. So just substitute the given to the formula. That will be 1 meter equals initial horizontal velocity times time which is 0 0.5 seconds then divide both side by 0 0.5 seconds and the answer is 2.0 meters per second let's go to our next sample problem a person is trapped in the snow and the rescue plane wants to drop some emergency supplies onto them the plane is flying at an altitude of 5,000 meters at the speed of 500 meters per second. How far in front of the person should the pilot drop the supplies so that they land right on top of the trapped person? Assuming as always, there is no air resistance. So this is our illustration and again, you may solve it on your own as well so that you will be able to follow along the process. So the given R, y equals 5,000 meters, which is going down, and the horizontal velocity, which is 500 meters per second. We are asked to solve for the horizontal displacement. What is the formula that we're going to use? That will be x equals 
initial horizontal velocity times time. But based from the given problem, time is not given. So what is the time it will take the supplies to hit the ground? We need to solve first the time so that we can solve for the distance. To solve for the time, use this equation. Y equals initial vertical velocity times time plus one half gt squared. Substitute the given to the formula and remember, we will use negative for the vertical displacement since the motion is going down. And again, for initial vertical velocity, for the projectile launch horizontally, it is equal to zero. Therefore, that will be negative 5,000 meters equals zero times time plus one half gt squared. So that will become five, negative 5,000 meters equals zero plus negative 4.9 meter per second squared times t squared. And it will become five, negative 5,000 meters equals negative 4.9 meter per second squared times t squared. Divide both sides by negative 4.9 meter per second squared. So that will become t squared equals negative 5,000 meters divided by negative 4.9 meter per second squared. Get the square root. Therefore, the answer is 31.94 seconds. So, it will take the supplies 31.94 seconds to hit the ground. Now, we will calculate how far will the supplies travel in 31.94 seconds. Again, to solve for the distance or displacement, use this equation. X equals initial horizontal velocity times time. Just substitute the given to the formula. That will be x equals 500 meters per second multiplied by the time, which is 31.94 seconds. And your answer is 15,971.91 meters. This means that from the time of release to the time the supplies hit the ground, the plane will travel 15,971.91 meters. So, the pilot should release the supplies at a distance of 15,971.91 meters in front of the person.